Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our A New Point of View, our digital show organized by Linea Pelle Fair. So today is July 22nd, and we are so pleased to have a special speaker from Montebello Conceria, or Conceria Montebello. And today I want to say well to Viola Dallemese, which will introduce the leather narrative. Thank Welcome, you. Viola. Ciao, Viola. Ciao, Orietta. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, so I want to, this narrative is a big, uh, you know, topic. I want to start from a brief introduction. Um, Conceria Montebello has always been very close to aesthetics. My father, that you can see in the picture there, um, started approaching <laughs> the, the word of fashion and trend in the 80s, and let's say he never looked back. So he uh, also used to paint and to play the guitar a lot, and he's always been telling me, um, you know, that making leather is like making art. So colors, recipes, technical skills, and poetry together, all in the same product. So uh, I have to tell you, I had no idea of how true this was till I started working here. And uh, so I work uh, for marketing. I, I try developing uh, new products and new collections. And uh, I work also in communications because of course you have to communicate your product. So. Mm, they, there's a very, very deep yeah. relationship. Well, can I jump inside? Can I jump inside? Of course. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I talk a lot. I, like, I always like to interrupt a little bit. So you are the young generation. You are the young generation of your family business or your father business. So it's really intriguing that you pick these images because in the letter narrative counts a lot, the combination of the three, the three picture. So I'm curious, why did you choose these beautiful pictures of your father in a younger situation and the music and this kind of making tools yeah, so, uh, well, my father, uh, I, I always loved it, this, this picture because of the flowers, because of the color mostly, and um, yes, the jacket, the orange jacket, and a different style completely. Uh, then, actually, you can see my grandfather staring at him, so there's a lot of history for me in the picture, and he... He was just, in, the, in his first years, you know, he was trying to actually... Uh, grow older in the business then you have his studio um and uh yes where he painted and and then you have this art version in our uh leather words so we like to call ourselves like uh, an industrial atelier so that's why I choose the picture because it represents this idea of of course yes being a uh, very very being a, a big industry, but still caring a lot for details and for de development. Interesting. Thank you for this. So, um, yes, I was saying that there's a, a very deep relationship between art and fashion, and, and that's, that's a sort of contamination. But um, it's not always, not always easy to actually keep up with the languages. You know, uh, we uh, decided that we wanted to try to find new ways of communicating our product through the social media, especially. So you'll see my presentation is very simple, but I just wanted to underline some concept that to us are very bond to leather. And the first one is narrative. So narrative basically means telling a story. It's very simple. And the story of leather, as we all know, is very old, but there's also a great fascination uh, and charm behind it. We can trace it back to the first man. So my pen just, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and uh, yes, it's, it's a story of 
development, again, of survival. It tells us about a human intelligence, about how we were able not to waste anything back in the days. So um, we would probably say it was one of the first ways of recycling things. It was the most natural choice to reuse the skin of an animal, you know, that they hunted the animals to eat them and then they transform that material into garment and we're not talking right so we're not talking about fashion here of course we are talking about the discovery of the great and the natural characteristic of a material like leather so it's uh, durability it's breathability the fact that it's uh, heat insulating so if you think about it, there's a, a great connection between our skin and leather. And uh, this is something very simple and unexpected at the same time, but for us, it was very worth being tell. And that's why I want to talk to you about one great experience that we had last year. So uh, during the research and uh, development phase for the, the fall winter 2020, um, of our collection, uh, we felt the need to celebrate natural leather and to underline its value and quality. So <laughs> this is how Annalyn became the, the key player of the collection mm -hmm. because we needed to talk about the product, right? Oh. <laughs> not, only, not only literature. And uh, so Annalyn finishing is um, the most precious refined and natural treatment that leather can receive. Uh, the etymology uh, comes from the Sanskrit nila, so it's a plant, and it, it, it suggests how this dyeing and finishing technique and process has very ancient origins back when human technologies were still based on the natural world and um, the, the massive use of synthetic sub substances were, was not all, even predictable yet. So um, aniline treatment ennobles the most precious leathers, like hides that reach the end of the, the process with minimal surface defects. And what I want to underline here is that the leather surface is naked and exposing all its history. So naked, that's a technical word that we used to define when a leather is not very treated, it's not very covered. We say it's naked. But if you think about it, there's, you know, on the other hand, it, it also means that it's exposing all its history. That's so- cool. can, I, can I stop again? Can I jump again inside of your, can you back to this? Because, I love, I love this description you, you gave about aniline because actually I didn't know some of the description about the Greek words, but I like the concept of naked because right now when we talk about purity, authenticity, so in a certain way we want to see a naked product but naked means it's pure, like natural God created. So it's something like this. And I, I like so much to have this kind of conversation with you. It could be more philosophical, but I think it's more related to senses. Why I'm jumping in this kind of things? Because lately I have several experience with the digital generation. <laughs> So digital generation is a generation Z. So this kind of very young guys that are completely digital, they are falling, really they fell in love in this authenticity, but they don't know exactly what is naked. So yeah. how can you express naked in a digital world if you have to use some elements? I am not, I mean, I'm young, but I, I don't think I'm that digital. Uh, but still, still, I think that uh, uh, maybe a word could be transparent because it's something that they can better understand. And, and again, it is something technical that you use to describe leather, 
because it is transparent, meaning that it has depth as a material and you can see through it. Uh, you can see beneath the surface, okay? It's transparent. But then on the other hand, there's a lot to tell about the transparency of the industry that produces leather, you know? Mm -hmm. So maybe, uh, maybe this is not the right answer, but maybe transparent could be uh, better understand uh, by, um, by the new generations because they, they heard so much about it, you know, uh, everyone needs sustainable, sustainability in their lives. And th it's something that they, they are starting to get for, getting for granted. So they, they know what we're talking about. Correct, correct. I think, it's, I think we will see in, in, the, in the project you want to show more, I think something like this. But I really think that this picture, it's highlighting so much the concept of appreciate the real ladder. And I think sometimes in a digital world, it's really a kind of fact of appreciation, understanding how to evaluate the quality. It is yeah. true. It mm -hmm. is true. And then there's a lot, you know, they, I hope they one day they they'll touch it they'll smell it you know because there's a lot uh, as you said it's all about the senses and from this picture that is actually a good one i think you know it's very defined but um you'll never get the experience of of it i know they're talking about you know digital touch and everything and digital spell someday we'll get through the the complete virtual world i i, I understand that that i know but uh there's something very special and very magical in touching in smelling in you know hugging even a purse <laughs> or your jacket that's why leather uh, has always been so popular in in garment i think because it's nice to touch, it's nice to smell, it's so real. Real, that's another, another word. Correct. So I think, yes, we were talking about this, uh, this project. And um, so at some point, uh, we felt since, you know, leather, we were talking about it, 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 it it as a primordial and archaic material. And uh, it's poetry, I think, comes from bearing so much life and history in it. And uh, so we felt the, the urge to explore this material uh, throughout art and bodies, dance and theater. So this project that you see here uh, was called Teatro Opera Anilina. Like we were dedicating an opera to Anilin, wow. and yeah, and it was a study on the poetic qualities of leather. So our first question was exactly, what's the contact between leather and human skin? And here, I will start playing a video. I am sorry if you'll not be able to stream this with high definition, but uh, I will give you links okay. to the videos later. Okay, so um, the intention of this project was to bring out the poetic features, you know, of leather by rhyming them with the uh, dance. So as leather tells the story of a trace in time, the body tells its changes, its movements, its efforts, and uh, its signs. <laughs> we decided to work and to rely on this young Milanese uh, company, which is called Compagnia La Lucina, and uh, they, they were very um, excited <laughs> because uh, they had the chance to investigate this material and the result of the union. Um, it's, it's still very emotional for me to watch it. I'm sorry. I have, I have history with dance, but I, 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 I like it very much. And um, yes, the union, though, started with a manifesto 
that I actually want to read to you because it, the manifesto compares leather and human skin, okay? So leather skin is the first covering, the first form of contact with the outside. Leather skin protects. Leather skin is sensitive. It welcomes, it touches, and it's touched. Leather skin breathes. Leather skin allows thermal regulation. Leather skin is colored. Leather skin is elastic. It allows and harmonizes movement. Leather skin ages. Leather skin is imperfect. It carries scratches, scars, and signs of its life. Leather skin leaves. So, sorry for reading. But it's really touching what you are saying. It's really, really touching because it's really what I was asking about the digital effects that you can have. And look in this picture, let me tell you, you really see the performance of the letter. I really think that this was talking about love, but also was talking about magic. Yes. The magic, the magic aspect that you can have when you play with this kind of uh, really wonderful material. Yes, and uh, they were very, uh, you know, they didn't expect as dancers, uh, as performers to uh, feel so much because they, they, let's say that they had time to study the material, first of all, you know, to smell it, as I was saying, to feel it, to learn about it, its weight, its shape, and, and its history, of course, its organic nature, you know. So they, 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 they tried to understand the essence. And uh, through this particular improvisational technique that they, they call the fluido, so it's like, it's a fluid mm. technique. Um, they, they were able to make the body and the leather talk to each other. Okay, so I, I think it, you can see uh, here that this, they called it at the end of, the, of re rehearsals, they called it body leather. Like they were using it as the same word. So like it, it was it indivisible. It, it, uh, no, I, I don't know how to pronounce that word, but um, indistinguishable, the same thing. Yes. These are really, and, they come up with me. These are elements. They are so important when a designer is starting to design a product and they want to use a material. So it's something like getting in love with the material, understanding the poetry of the material and the performance. So I think this is really a great way to get inside and then starting to design your product, your objects. Cool. Uh, cool. That is, yes, you are right. And then um, our idea is also to teach a little bit about the you know, the true uh, facts about leather. Because yes, it, 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 it ages, as we said, it has defects. You know, you have, to, you have to understand and to accept it as a customer. Otherwise, mm, yes, it is leather maybe, but it's not, uh, it's not that pure. It's not that, I'm sorry, this is finished. And um, yes, so it is very important. It was uh, very, very uh, important for us to let them understand the, sorry. There we go. Uh, the idea uh, of uh, what, what is real leather? Why does it have to scratch? When they say, I don't want it to scratch. Yes, well, it, try scratching yourself and you'll see that <laughs> what happens. Um, so yes, the first concept we, we saw uh, and that we wanted to underline um, about leather is, of course, beauty and, and poetry. Because as you saw, leather, for also for the performers, it has opened up new scenarios, you know, new um, ideas, new m movement possibilities. Uh, and, and, and at the same time, leather ha has revealed um, it's poetic power, so it's magic.
that's what you were you what what you were saying and um but yes uh after discovering how much beauty and magic you know there is in leather we as uh, i mean conceria montebello felt the need to move forward in communication and we needed to be concrete and to talk to the young people and uh yes to tell them what italian tanneries are doing to help the planet and how responsible they are uh you know how this beautiful material is also ethical and uh how we are trying to respect our planet so our next question was why should generation z choose leather what do they know about leather mm -hmm. and eh, <laughs> Eh, that's a good question. Good question. This is. A I have a very, I have a very, um, little sister. Little sister. See, yeah. she's eleven. See, she's, <laughs> she's a. So she's, she's a generation. Yes, yes. So <laughs> she can teach you. She can drive you. <laughs> I know. What, yeah, I remember. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and yes, so uh, that's how and that's when the the 100 leather sustainability project came to mind so this is still an open project for us uh, aiming at sustainable fashion that's also very you know common these days but still it's a great cause so we believe in it and 100 leather represents our commitment and care towards environmental impact reduction here yes orietta here the keyword is transparency so as we said the, the transparency of a pure and natural aniline and leather but also the clarity and the openness in sharing sustainability objectives correct and this is really at the other side of the evolution of the transparency that you said i'm curious now what's yeah. going on Health. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. So we wanted to state something big, something true, something we believe in, that the, that the health of our planet is a priority for us and that our, our goal is to become a zero waste tannery, an all round recycling tannery. And so we started uh, a um, joint sustainability campaign, uh, hashtag joint sustainability campaign. <laughs> So, um, something I have to tell you, probably uh, a little ambitious for a tannery considering uh, its target, but still, still an attempt to be part of a change. And so here is the second video I wanted to show you that is and was part of this campaign. Um, it's very long, so maybe I'm going to, I will... Uh, of course, I think we can see on social also, so we can also follow in social. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yes, please, please do that. It's the whole point of trying to to talk <laughs> uh, to 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 the young generations, uh, because we want to share. We love to share. We love inclusion, and uh, as you can see. Uh, I wanted to jump a little forward. As you can see, we tried to be very um, direct. So that uh, I, we think that, that that's no better way of explaining our planet's situation uh, than through cruel images at some point. And uh, you know that they call this the Anthropocene era, like the time where finally <laughs> human impact on uh, impacted on human behaviors impacted on the uh, the geology the ecosystems and including the, the climate change so we are um, we might say we are destroying the planet a, a little bit and i i wanted to i'm sorry let me find can you tell that i'm not very technologic no. Here we go. <laughs> we like it, this kind of things. It's uh, you are just very immediate. So I, but I have a question. In time, in the meantime, that the images go through. 
how did you came up to present this kind of images where we don't really see leather? So which was a reaction internally, but also externally when, I don't know, your clients, your team, uh, the employers, and even everybody was, was saying, oh, what's going on with Montebello? <laughs> so uh, we, we believe that um, visualize means to understand. Hmm. And so it's very important what, as you said, of course, what you, you want to present and want to show to people and how you show it. But people understand suffering and emotion better than great infographics, I think. So I assure you that we tried developing a series of videos about what, tan what our tannery was doing and had done, you know, in terms of reducing emissions and, and et cetera, et cetera. I, I like this, but I, I talk about it as et cetera, et cetera, because it's very technical and it's long. And people at the end of the day, they don't want to hear that. They just want to know you're sustainable, that your product is sustainable. So um, sometimes you put a lot of effort in, in explaining what you are actually doing, practically doing, and then they won't listen or they won't understand. So uh, this campaign has done so much in terms of reactions because um, it was like saying, okay, uh, yes, now we understand. And so therefore you have to be sustainable. Yeah. They didn't even care <laughs> uh, about the whole 100% leather concept and all, our, all the investments, all the effort that we have um, put into the project because it's a pro it's an open project but it's been going on for eight to ten years so i mean and so it was it was a good test this one because um yes because people that that's leather narrative that's narrative at the end of the day they want to hear stories i like stories i want to hear stories when i buy something I love them. And so if they are so uh, cruel and emotional or so easy to, uh, to remember, I think it was a good test, this one. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, like it. I, I like it what you say because you started with a different way to involve your, let me say, community with beautiful images, with magic images. And when you say cruel, it's, I think it more or less is people see that behind of a company, there are people. There are people with emotion. So, and this is, as you said, uh, because you choose this kind of picture means that you are doing all, all of your best to be committed to sustainability, committed in your responsible way to act. So yes. this, is really good. this is really interesting, the way you, uh, you communicate it. It was, of course, a, a way to underline our philosophy because uh, uh, there's, a, there's another thing very popular these days that, that uh, it's the product that needs to be sustainable, but uh, it is the process that, that needs to be sustainable, otherwise you'll never have a sustainable product. So, you know, it's only by being devoted to each step of the production process that uh, by, by looking into every small detail uh, that you gain and develop a sustainable article. So this wow. is something very, it is something very difficult to explain. And I don't know why it is so difficult to explain it. But as we already said, being sustainable is being responsible. And being responsible means carrying each step of the way and considering how long <laughs> the, and complicated the tannery process is, there's a lot of work to do if you want to put some uh, effort into it. And um, <laughs> so yes, 100% leather means 100% caring. That's what I would like to say. And I'm very happy because next, uh, last week we, we got the confirmation of our gold medal uh, from uh, LWG. And you know, in this 
difficult times, it was very interesting to go through uh, an audit again. And um, we're, we're proud because because see and and yeah, let me say that this means that you never stop and this was something like one of my questions now just asking you i understood that you have this kind of medium and long project that started a long time ago in uh, be committed in sustainability so you achieve your price and and then you will go through because after COVID, I think most of the company that uh, invested in this kind of uh, credo, let me say credo, because it's credo, big, yes. uh, this is the images that we see now, they believe it's something that you have to apply and be real. So and I like uh, this ending of the video with this beautiful picture of transparency or transparent images, which means so clean, so pure. So yes, 100%. 100% positive, because this ending was meant to tell people that we believe in this, we can change the world together. I know that it sounds stupid. I don't know if you if we can say that but sometimes no it, it, you have to be positive in life you have to look smile survival like if yeah. you i love it smile survival so yes amore so which is love love narrative love <laughs> orietta i'm very happy to i'm very happy that you called me to do this Thank you again. Right. And <laughs> so, yes, the second concept, as you might have noticed, it's uh, nature and pureness. And it's the second idea about leather that, that we, we already said this many times, but leather is real. Leather is authentic and there's nothing to hide. That's why you can see through it. So I want to, I just want to end by showing you this this uh, because this week we are launching our new project called leather peels and uh, as you can read there it is a, a digital feature with the aim of spreading information on the world of leather and promoting dialogue within the supply chain um, i'm happy to say that orietta was my guest <laughs> in this project <laughs> so no I, I really, I, we, I'm really excited to see what happens because I was not expecting so much energy and so much availability from all the people I, I asked to, uh, you know, to, to be a part of this. And uh, this is sharing, this is being part, this is joining together. So I personally, I am very, very happy about this and I hope I convinced you to follow our social accounts by now. <laughs> I totally agree with you. And I do think that I love this aspect to see things with the emotion because it's the way that people, when they create something with emotion, we can feel the emotion in the material and also through the products. So the final consumer, the final user, when they buy something, they add something, so they use it, they wear it, they feel this inside emotion. So I'm totally trust on it, completely trust on it. And I also love it to talk with you. So I'm, I'm, I wish that also all the people that attended love it to listen to us. Otherwise, we love each other to speak about, yes. <laughs> about, leather, about leather because we are leather lover. We so are. What, what, is, what is this? What are you suggesting us? No, I just wanted to make sure that if someone did, couldn't, you know, uh, stream the video properly, uh, you could find it on our Vimeo channel. And so just, um, you know, information to yeah. end. Great, great, great to know because, you know, we are in a digital era. We like to see and share and <laughs> mind and tell to the people that we were looking this picture. So let me say it was so nice to speak with you because a new point of view, it's really the aim to 
tell stories in a different way, in a deeper way. So I want to invite you and also everyone that is listening to us now, but also in YouTube channel or Instagram stories to to come and to join the physical event that we will create next September 22 and 23. Otherwise, we'll be connected online, so we never miss online to stay on stage in the world. Grazie Viola. Grazie, Grazie Orietta. I thank you to all of you to listen and I wish you can share. You, you can share your opinion, you can give us uh, your point of view. So we are an open screen. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. It was really a pleasure. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao a tutti. <laughs> ciao. <laughs>